Hi, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell, and in today's video, I'm going to continue the analysis of uh, Paulo Freire's Pedagogy of the Press. Uh, we're going to continue the analysis of Chapter 2. Uh, the lecture comes from uh, Section 2.2 of the notes. Um, just click the banner, and it will take you to the PDF. Also, if you um, click the description box, it'll take you to a link. You can follow along in the notes, um, you can watch the video, or you can do a combination of both. Um, what we've done up until this point was um, two things. In chapter one, we recognize that Freer situates the relationship between the oppressor and the oppressed in terms of its social relationship. In chapter two, what we're doing, what Freer is doing, is he's situating the relationship between the oppressor and the oppressed, not within social relations, at least at this point in the discussion, but within um, the educational system, right? Traditional education, and it's that system of traditional education that he's that he's challenging, right? The relationship between the student and the teacher. Um, and I'm going to begin this discussion of section 2.2 with um, an articulation of this relationship, the contradiction. Okay, so this is pedagogy. we need to do, and this is uh, chapter 2.2. Alright, the first thing that we need to do is we need to understand specifically what the relationship is, what the contradiction of the teacher-student relationship is, right? So, what is the teacher-student what is this, the teacher-student contradiction? All right, we have a teacher. We have a student. As we've seen already in the previous series um, of chapter two, the first series in chapter two, is that the assumption is that the teacher, the teacher is a gift giver. The teacher has content knowledge, and that information comes from, F-R, F-R-O-M, I forget spell, from the teacher. These are some of the, the main ideas, right? So I have content knowledge, I transmit that knowledge to the student, um, the student has this information and the information is deposited, right, so that this becomes the act of, of, right, this becomes the act of depositing. This whole system, this whole system, according to Fourier, is the banking concept, right. This, this whole system is the banking concept of education, and the content knowledge is deposited into the mind of the student. The student then, this is a teacher, this is a student, the student is passive, the student is, uh, should be receptive, right? The student is passive, the student should be receptive, and the student is inherently ignorant. Okay, so this is sort of the, the banking concept of education. Um, the question becomes, how does the contradiction between the student, I mean the student, and the teacher arise? Well, the contradiction is as follows, right? There is an assumption, if we bracket, right, the student and the teacher, there is an assumption in this, in this sort of drawing that it is only the teacher, I mean the student, that learns, right? There's only a possibility for the teacher to deposit content information, deposit this information into the receptacle that is the student's mind, right? In this way, there isn't a backflow of information. But in the following example, right, I'm about to give you, in this example that I'm about to uh, demonstrate, there is a sense in which teachers, the right type of teacher, can learn from students as well. 
it is the obligation of the teacher to create the situation, right? To create the situation wherein he or she can receive this uh, content information from the students, right? So that there has to be an exchange between the teacher and the student. How is this brought about? Well, if we recognize that information is not only transmitted from the student, from the teacher to the student, but that information can also be transmitted to the, the instructor, then this information can also be deposited in the mind of the teacher. The question is how is this, how is this possible? If it's possible for the student to educate the teacher, and it seems obvious that it is, but if it is possible for the student to educate the teacher, then we recognize that the assumption in the banking concept that only teachers teach students is a contradiction. It's false, right? It's, it's false. Why? It's false because students can teach teachers as well. So how is this done? Imagine, if you will, as an instructor to a class, to a, a member of a class. It's called polling, right? It's called polling. I poll uh, my audience and I ask, um, okay, class, based on the information that we've discussed in our reading of uh, Jonathan Swift's Modest Proposal, for example, um, what are your interpretations of the text, right? So based on what I've told you about the text, based on my instruction that I've given you on the text, it was satirical, it was about the famine in Ireland, and so on, and so on, and so on. What are the implications of what I've taught you? I'm not asking the students, right? That is a completely different question than if I were to ask the students, um, who is the author of the text? Um, where was the text written? Um, what was the purpose of writing this text, and so on, right? I'm asking about the implications based on what you already know, what I've given you, this information that I've deposited, right? What are some of the implications? What is something that you can tell me that I never told you? Now, the student has to think critically about that, right? The student might say, for example, this, I don't know, this is off the top of my head, the student might say, well, Swift's, um, Swift's account of um, infanticide and cannibalism was a desperate ploy for, I don't know, international intervention or something. I don't know, right? But the student says something that, wow, okay, I never thought of that. That now information is fed back to the instructor, and the instructor can make a deposit of his or her own, right? So this idea of the banking concept, that information is solely deposited into a very passive um, receptacle, that is the student, is false because, as I've just shown you, there is a possibility for students to engage in um, information exchange with an instructor, to give an instructor information as well. Right? And according to Freer, this is when education is done well, right? when the instructor can give information, but the instructor can also receive information. Um, um, there has to be, obviously, an ability, an ability according to Freer, for the teacher to learn as well. It can't be the case that the teacher cannot learn from the student, right? You would, you would classify an instructor that refuses to learn from students or can never learn from students as being arrogant or pompous, right? It should be the case that um, both students and teachers in this relationship have uh, a possibility and ability to learn from each other, right? That it, there's a mutual relationship and this mutual relationship involves uh, mutual learning. Okay, so this teacher has to have an ability to learn, but the student has to have an ability to teach, right? So the student needs an ability to teach, and that's very, very important, right? In, in um, the, the politics of a classroom, it might be difficult for this to manifest in all cases, maybe group work might be better, but there has to be a possibility for the students to become the teacher, to actually teach both the teacher and fellow students, right? Okay, 